Okay, we're going to start off this lesson with a little bit of review, and we're going to review the area of a rectangle. So the formula is A equals L times W. Who can tell me what L stands for in the formula? Anyone? L stands for length. Very good. And what about W? Do you know what the W stands for? W stands for width. Very good. All right, now I'm going to put up another thing and see which, if you know the sides of it. Uh, is this the width up here? No, that's the length. The length. So then what is this one? That would be the width. That's the width. Very good. All right. So now we are going to move into a new topic. We're going to talk about the area of a parallelogram. And can anyone tell me what a parallelogram looks like? No, well you guys should know, you learned this a few weeks ago. Well, I'll give you an example to remind you. Remember, it looks like this, there's parallel lines, these two are parallel, and these two are parallel. And there's, the sides are slanted. It's good to remember this, you have to remember. So, can anyone tell me, what does a parallelogram look like? It has two sides on the top, and then the, si the sides on the sides are parallel. Very good, okay. So then, here's the formula, and we haven't talked about the area of a parallelogram before. So, can anyone guess what the B would stand for? Have any idea? B stands for base. Base, you're so smart. <laughs> you obviously practice at home. And H, ooh, this one's very hard. Does anyone have any idea? And H stands for height. Height? Wow, you're so smart. Well, for the rest of us in the class who maybe didn't know that, we're going to write our definitions. And then we know A stands for area, right? Right. Yes. All right. So, I want everyone to write this on your own piece of the paper for your future reference. So, A stands for area, and B stands for base, and H stands for height. Now I'm going to give you the definitions, and I want you to write them down. Base is the bottom side. Any side can actually be the bottom side, but you just have to keep that the same when you're working on it. And the height is the distance from the base to the opposite side. So that's kind of confusing, huh? Well, I'm going to get my parallelogram again and show you. So if this is the base down here, which side is the opposite side? This one? No. This one? No. This one. Yeah. Yeah, very good. And then the height is always perpendicular. Do you know what perpendicular is? We should we should know this. We've talked about it. it means a 90 degree angle. 90 degree angle. Very smart. So it has to be the height has to be a 90 degree angle from the base, the opposite side. So that would make it right here. It's a very straight up and down line. It's a vertical line. And so it's always important to remember that the height is always perpendicular. And sometimes we have, it's not really visible. Like if we were looking at it like this, you don't actually see the height. So you have to draw it in yourself and you can see. But for learning purposes, I'm going to give you the height line for a while. Um, so we're going to move in to our activity. And we're going to take our scissors and tape. I'm going to demonstrate for you guys, and then you guys do it. So what I want you to do to show you how much a parallelogram is in relationship to a rectangle, I'm going to show you an activity that you can do to see it. So I'm going to, everyone has a pre-cut uh, parallelogram, and I've labeled the height line for you already. So I want everyone to do is to cut down the height line. And you cut it right off. Nice and straight, cut carefully, take your time. And then I want you to take some tape and then figure out a way that you can loop, uh, tape it on the other side that would make this a perfect rectangle. So I figured out my way. And then you just tape it right on. If you can take it right. So, if you look, now we have 
a rectangle. And then for if we want to find the area of a rectangle, we want to use this equation. And then if we want to use do the area of a parallelogram, which would be like this, it would be this one. So I want everyone to do this activity on your own, and then we'll work on some examples. And everyone's done? Okay, good. Now I'm going to put up the first example, and we're going to work on this together, so don't worry. So, the first one is our side is ten, 6 inches long, our base is 10 inches, and our height is 5 inches. When we look, we have a perpendicular line. Remember, height is always perpendicular. So, we have this. So, who could tell me maybe our first step? that we should do? Find the base. Find the base, right. Okay, so then we want to basically put in the numbers into our formula. So base equals 10 inches. So then we, on your papers, I want everyone to be doing this, write 10 where under your B. And then, what do we need to find next? The height. Height, good. Is 6 inches our height? No. Why? Because it's not perpendicular to the base. Very good. Okay. So then 5 inches definitely is our height. So I want you to write 5 inches under your H. And I know everyone can do this multiplication because we've been working on it for a few years now. So do the multiplication. And what is your area? 50 inches. Very good. And I love how you added your inches in there. That's good that you remembered that always very important that we keep the measurements the same. Um, so for example two, it's going to be a little bit more difficult and we'll still work on it together. So example two is, this looks different, doesn't it? We have our height going a different way, isn't it? But should that matter? No. Right. And why is that? Because it's still perpendicular to one of the sides. Very good. And remember, the base can be any side, but you just have to keep it the same. So, our height is 3 meters, and our side is 4 meters, and then our base would be three, 2 meters. And so, sorry, it's a little confusing, isn't it, when it's off to the side? I even get a little bit confused. So it's good that you take the time and keep going through it. And double check all your work. So, we'd want to just put all this into the equation. And what would our, be our area? If this is the height and this is the base. Six meters squared. Squared. Wow, that's very good. I'm glad you remembered that. Uh, so then, for our third example, and this one's going to be a little more challenging because we don't have our diagram, but I gave you all the measurements, so we should be able to do this pretty easily. So we have base, height, and the side. Now what two numbers do we need to be using to find the area of a parallelogram? A base and the height base and the height, so that's 20 and 6. So, then we put that in, and then we have to find that answer. It's a big multiplication. Does anyone know this answer? It's really I big. think it's 120 meters squared. Ve meters? Centimeters squared. Oh, very good. So now, um, your worksheet has a few problems that has been handed out, and I want you guys to complete that just so I can see where you're at on this. Make sure everyone's on the same level. And if you need any help, let me know, and I'd be glad to help. Or if you want to ask a neighbor, your neighbors can help you. So, um, yes, you can start and then turn in your papers at the end.